is we misread, in meaning not misread any language, but the situation. We have an MOU with the town. We pay $760,000 a year for the town for the, the, the fire departments as the first responder and for the traffic that comes in and out of Deer Island. And our thought was it was well within the bounds of that MOU to add a relatively small, in our minds, a relatively small number of trucks. Because to be honest with you, depending on the season, depending on what construction projects we have, the amount of vehicles goes up and down. We thought, in a sense, it was noise. What we misread or misunderstood is really maybe this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Right? Got it. And, and, we misread. and, and I, I will take blame for that. We will take blame for that, that we misread the situation. We clearly have misread the situation and, and the frustration of you folks here and others in the neighborhood. We just assumed it was another part of just doing business on the island and we will take responsibility for that miscommunication. Um, and again, a couple other things I think now that, you know, sorry, now that there's been a, a hold put on this, if you will, um, I happened to read the NWRA feasibility study dated February 21st, 2013. The study had a section impact, entitled MWRA Benefits and MWRA Impacts. This study had no mention of Winthrop. It had no mention of the impacts to Winthrop. And what I was wondering is, did the MWRA commission a feasibility study for what the impacts on Winthrop was going to be? Because I looked and I can't find one. Mm -hmm. well, 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 I mean, again, the misread on our part was we didn't think what we thought was a relatively small amount of trucks Monday to Friday warranted that. Again, I'm being very honest with you. I mean, it, it's and and so that was our mistake. And again, I apologize for that. And I apologize again. So no, there was none because we thought it was well within the parameters of what we had flexibility to do within the MOU. And and, and speaking um, quickly to the MOU, and I'm not an attorney, but I have been a paralegal for 17 years. I think probably within the parameters of the MOU, you could do it. We, and that's where we have a bigger town-wide problem. The MOU that currently expires on June 30th, 2015, has next to zero protection for the town of Winthrop in it. It is, comparing it to the one that, you know, I'll probably say my mother helped negotiate Kate Riley at the inception of all this. And when I read through that MOU to the next one to the next one, it dwindled and dwindled and dwindled. It would dwindle in certain respects, because the first MOU talked a lot about construction. Um, but, so yes, I agree with you, probably in the constraints of the current MOU, have the right to do this. Um, but like you said, I think there was, there was a, a, a bad read, if you will, on how um, the town was, and I think it's us too, the town finally woke up when Don Manning spoke and said, Everyone listen, what is going on here? Um, okay, and then, um, sorry, Bob threw me off. Um, the, other, the other question I had, which again, may be moot at this point, but it might be a question either for you or for waste management. Um, I had heard, I know that it's five days a week, you will come into the town at seven, you have to be off the island at three. I was told by various people that there was some constraints in that agreement that you could not come through the town during school drop-off and school pickup times. I don't know if you're familiar if you've driven down Revere Street on a, a morning at 7.15. The traffic is horrific because a lot of us are going to the Gorman Fort Bank School to drop off our children. I didn't see, and someone says it's there, and I read that waste management agreement, I saw nothing in there that said that those trucks are not going to be one behind me and one in front of me when I'm driving to school, when I'm driving my kids to school. That's a big problem for me. Um, the congestion is horrific. <coughs> if one of those trucks spills, we, we've got a problem. So I'm just curious, even though you know, hopefully you guys are happily going back to the table, or we're happy, you're not happy. Um, <laughs> my question with that is, was that in the current agreement? Or is that somewhere that you guys weren't going to be able to truck during those hours? Yeah, um, we 
we had put together a delivery protocol that included not running through the town between 8 and 8.20 and 2 and 2.20 um, to avoid when school drop off and school pick up. Was. The agreement we have with MWRA was that we needed to be two commands of island until 7 o'clock and be off the island until yes. 3 o'clock. And I can tell you just with our, and I think it would be helpful for you guys too in your renegotiation of all this, we leave our houses earlier than that to get our kids to school. So those windows actually aren't enough. So whenever you, uh, whoever you speak with when you're doing this now, whether it's this committee we're forming or whether it be our town manager or our town council will never be, those really need to be put in place, those time frames, because I don't think waste management wants a truck, something to happen during, I don't, during any time you don't want an accident. But I sure as heck don't want an accident when I'm driving my 579 year old. Um, right. 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 And then I'm sorry, my last point that I'm going to try and talk to them, I'm getting some of them in, is that, you know, like Bob said, we don't want the trucks. Right. 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 <laughs> When the Deer Island was built, and I want to say what was it, 25 years ago or so, there was a pier put in place, and it has the roll-on, roll-off system. And I hear that that pier is also happening. I'm not sure if it's going to be maybe completed in May in Charlestown. So my thing is, is why can't again? Let's see you're how how this project was originally. You're going to truck it in. Why can't the the pier be? I don't know if it needs you know some infrastructure changes or it needs some help. But fix that pier. You know, again, as Daryl says, it's Dare Island property. Fix the pier, make it usable, to stop coming through our streets and to truck it. I mean, to, to put the truck on the barge, however you do it, and barge it, and barge it through. It's just. <laughs> I just, I think it's very easy when you're, not you, when you're in the legislature and you're a senator and a representative and the governor. How many of those people are in the town of Winthrop? And that's where this all comes from. This all comes from the governor's desk down, from DEP and everyone else. My big concern with this, and I'm curious if the DEP gentleman can answer this, what other facility in Massachusetts has the capability to handle co-digestion? Because what my concern is, and a lot of people's concern is, it's we're not just gonna get food waste from 41 communities at some point, this is going to be expanded That's and expanded, right. Right. and we're going to be the garbage dump for Massachusetts. And, and, and that's we are people's concern by. So thank you for your time. There are a handful of, of anaerobic digesters, digesters in um, uh, wastewater plants around the state. We own two of the five. One is in Clinton. We have a small wastewater treatment plant there. And the other is obviously Deer Island. And the, the, the massive size of Deer Island, we are the biggest uh, by far. I would say that it was our intent. Uh, we have a general rule of thumb that we try to keep our trucks off the road during the school rush hours in the, in the morning and the afternoon. And while that's sometimes that's you know, violated, we make a, a good faith effort to try to keep our trucks uh, in, in that situation. Every now and then a truck will come up from Delaware or somewhere and get stuck in traffic trap in Hartford, Connecticut and, and pull in at the wrong time. But we, we really try to manage them very aggressively. I know that an issue that has, has um, come up repeatedly is the, the trucks out on the point running the stop sign, or, and, and we've been very aggressive on that. Uh, we recently had a, an employee. No, you're not. You're not. Well, we just you're had an employee. No, no, no. No, no. They're not going to buy a house. They're not going to buy a house. That's just. Okay, well. Stop. 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 I would just tell you, when we catch them, we were serious about it. A gentleman in our 22 year career in the private company was fired because of us, because he rolled through the stop sign. So when, when it, we're aware of it, Put it in we pursue so it. We know. I'm sorry? Put it in the paper so we know what's going on. Okay. Everything's right. a secret down there. Um, that's, that's one of the things that was, was just mentioned that we offered at the town council meeting, and that is we should probably have a standing committee that meets seasonally or whatever, however, you know, an ongoing committee 
and people can come. We'll give you updates on what's going on. You can express your concerns so it doesn't get to this point. And I think it's, again, called the Citizens Advisory Committee. We have one in Howard's Neck out in Quincy where we have a, a facility on that island. And I think we'd like to, uh, to yeah, set that up. Okay, and we'll meet regularly. Yes. And we'll go through the various issues uh, and, and get an early warning if, if we're heading down the wrong road. And you also get a sense to, of what we're doing and why we're doing it. So are there other? Well, let me give you already spoken. Let me give Mr. Osborne. Thank you, Mr. Lassen. Um, I, I've reviewed a